uh, we have been talking about uh, general introduction of environmental geomechanics and uh, I have given you a lot of logics until now uh, about the scope, the philosophy, uh, what are the issues which uh, environmental geomechanics specialist or environmental geotechnologists are facing in contemporary world and uh, in particular how to deal with these situations. So, if I sum it up whatever I have discussed until now, uh, the environmental geomechanics is a branch of uh, engineering and technology uh, where mainly we study the quality of water and land resources because these are the basics or basic requirements for the sustenance of the life. We always try to find out an optimal solution between the different constraints which I have uh, discussed in the previous lectures. And uh, another activity in which environmental geotechnologists are involved uh, is uh, the transport, use and disposal of hazardous waste and then treatment of the waste water and water earlier it used to be a domain of uh, environmental scientists, but now I will hope you will realize that with the recent developments and technologies which are being implemented, uh, the role of environmental geotechnologists becomes very, very important and of course, the reuse of water. We also talk about the uh, investigations or the analysis, design of foundation systems, uh, seepage control, earthen dams, water resource structures. And uh, we are quite interested in studying what is the response of the foundations and embankments to environmental activities. And these environmental activities can be grouped in two categories. The first one is man-made and another one is uh, the natural process or natural calamities we call it. So, here I have given you some examples of what are the uh, man-made activities though we discuss quite in details. Uh, primarily, uh, the man-made activities would be industrialization and population explosion and once you talk about these issues, everything uh, is a part and parcel of this including the uh, scarcity of the land which I talked about in the previous lecture. The second issue is the natural environmental activities and I hope uh, all of you are now seeing that uh, all of us are facing in a big way uh, the disasters which are occurring naturally or which could be man-made also. So, this is what the point of discussion is what causes what ultimately the humanity and the society is suffering and we have to try to come out of this situation. So, when we talk about the natural activities which are responsible to motivate us all right uh, to become environmental geotechnologists and take up these type of assignments would be primarily earthquakes. Anything which comes to your mind apart from earthquakes see hurricanes, uh, tsunamis are playing a very, very important role. I have been dealing with several examples in our own country where post tsunami uh, the rehabilitation part particularly in Andaman and Nicobar area uh, became a very big challenge. Just to give you a very quick example, uh, tsunami brings lot of sediments along with it and these sediments get deposited on the coastline and now the infrastructure on these type of loose unconsolidated settlement set sediments is going to be a very big question mark. So, something of this sort is being done in the coastal areas of the country. Hence, tsunami has become a very, very important thing to be studied though I will not be discussing much about tsunami in this uh, course because I am not an expert in the subject. The another thing could be cloud burst all right, it is a natural disaster. So, I hope you understand what is meant by cloud burst. Uh, all of a sudden, a uh, tremendous amount of rainfall taking place in a limited time, all right. Mostly this happens in the hilly terrains, upper reaches of uh, the Himalayas or the uh, hills, but nowadays it is becoming very common in cities also, all right. This could be the change in the climatic pattern. So, in what way? Uh, the cloud burst could be linked with the practice of environmental geomechanics uh, is the height of imagination. I hope you can make it out very easily. When cloud burst occurs, the chances of landslides become extremely you know severe and landslide is a subject which every geotechnical engineer would like to handle. So, this is how things become interdisciplinary and they get linked with each other. So, hurricanes, tsunamis, design of foundations for extremely high wind velocities. 
So, until now you have been very conveniently designing the foundations for you know insignificant loads I would say, insignificant moments. But recently you must have seen when uh, the eastern part of the country was hit by cyclone, what is the name of the cyclone? Penny, alright, very similar. <laughs> so, what type of disaster occurred and how to mitigate this that means you have to revise the concepts of conventional geomechanics where the moments for conventional buildings are not taken into account much. So, this is how the subject is getting evolved you know the moments are becoming more and more important on the foundation system rather than the dead loads. Volcanic eruptions, so we are lucky that uh, you know we are in a country where not many volcanic eruptions have been seen yet except for the island you know islands of this country uh, particularly Andamans and all. But think of the countries or the civilizations which are on active volcanic regions. So, this is going to become a very big problem. One good example which you can google would be uh, how these Japanese train the lava uh, so that it does not influence the rehabilitation. So, they channelize the entire lava and they are experts in this. So, there are very good YouTube uh, videos which are available on this. So, the volcanic eruption could cause significant problems as far as the human settlements are concerned. What else could happen because of the volcanic eruption? This I was talking about the molten state of the lava which is flowing like fluid. So, a few years back you must have heard about volcanic eruption which happened in Europe and because of that the east got disconnected completely with west. Why? No idea, check it out what happened. So, when you have eruptions of particulate matter in the environment the visibility and the density of air changes, you cannot fly through. So, for several months the flights remain unoperational, ultimately what happens? It influences the economy of the nations. So, suppose if you are totally disconnected from rest of the part of the world, uh, you are going to be severely affected. So, these are the future domains of environmental geomechanics I am very sure, uh, which uh, you guys must be you know facing I would say. So, the right time to gear up and adopt them as the future profession for geotechnical engineers. Do not get limited to what you have been doing very conveniently because uh, that part people have already mastered. So, I hope uh, you have understood there is a series of natural disasters alright and these are mostly man made, they could be natural also. Avalanche I think we have talked about you know movement of the snow on the hills. Now, this is also a good example of uh, how natural activities might uh, create chaos particularly in the upper reaches of Himalayas. Uh, if you google it you will find lot of information on how um, avalanche influences the structures. Instability of the structure is caused by movement of the avalanche ok. So, now unfortunately we do not offer a course of uh, a cold region geomechanics in India because we have ignored certain parts of the country, we never thought that they are the part of the mainstream it looks like. But I am sure one of you or some of you should really take up these challenges and try to consider the geomechanics of frozen soils. So, fortunately in our group R and D group uh, some of them are working in this area and we are trying to see what is the response of uh, the soils when they are uh, you know subjected to varied environmental conditions. Alright, anything which comes to your mind apart from this? Floods, cloud bursts, floods, yes, flooding also is a part of the mostly man made nowadays rather than you must be reading in newspapers every day what is going on and who is responsible, there is a big debate which is going on. So, be a part of the central theme of discussion of the country, you know, you cannot be isolated, yes. The enormous uh, snowfall is all or can be, yeah, so it will result in avalanche. So, the way you talked about NCOC materials normally consolidated over consolidated soils, uh, avalanche is nothing but a over consolidated snow. So, imagine the layers of snow getting deposited and the next uh, you know deposition coming over hitting the particles and the system becoming more and more condensed is what avalanche is alright, fine.
So, snow mechanics and uh, mechanics of the frozen regions is becoming a part of uh, today's discussion. I will talk about this in details. Anything else apart from this? What are the recent trends uh, which we might or might not cover in the realm of environmental geomechanics, but my idea is to keep you updated on what is happening internationally and this is what the present day scenario is in geotechnical engineering which I do not know whether you are aware or not. So, the list is very long, but what I have done is I have tried to uh, stuff everything in few sentences and just to give you a an idea about what is happening in contemporary world and what geotechnical engineers are doing. The sky is the limit. So, we start with the material science, you know the present day geotechnical engineering is mostly about the materials and these materials could be uh, neo materials, neo are the ones which is which are new, which are not conventionally existing, man made, alright. So, fly ash, silica fume, slags, different type of industrial waste which you are dumping are all becoming neo materials because I think we discussed in the previous lecture that these materials require a very different and special attention of geotechnical engineers. We are also talking about the nanomaterials, different type of resins, zeolites, all right, different type of synthesis, synthesized materials. And this is where, if you remember, when I was talking about the introduction of the course, I was saying that uh, we talk about the interaction of geomaterials with environment with a view that we would like to understand how alter, how the geomaterial is altering. And this alteration could be physical, chemical, mineralogical, biological and so on. So, this has become an order of the day where people try to understand what type of alterations the material undergo when the interaction starts. And I think I have described interaction enough in the previous lecture, how the geomaterial contaminant or environment interaction occurs. So, the perception is going to the basics of the materials where we want to understand rocks, soils, groundwater, man-made materials as the basic materials and then we want to understand the mechanics of these materials, alright. So, with this in view, the characterization becomes very, very important. I will be talking a lot about the characterization of geomaterials uh, in the subsequent lectures. Mining and mineral engineering has become a part of geotechnical engineering. So, a lot of mining activities are being uh, planned, executed by the geotechnical engineers and uh, there are some people who are working in the areas like uh, geoenvironmental issues related to mining. Um, there are a lot of a scope of understanding the materials, how do they react and how I can use different types of materials to uh, support the mining activities. I hope you can realize slope stability anybody can do. So, when they come to a specialized surgeon, then the problem has to be different, all right. There is a quick answer. So, it is not only the, the slope stability, but there are a lot of other issues. Geohazard mitigation, I cited several examples of geohazard. Anything which is related to geo earth is an hazard these days. I mean, we have discussed so many cases. Um, there is a big boom in the information technology and artificial intelligence and expert systems in the realm of geotechnical engineering. How many of you are aware of this? There are a lot of expert systems, Abacus, no, it is a simple mathematical formulation, nothing else. Check it out on Net Soil Vision is the name of the company and their products are expert systems products, Geo Vision, Soil Vision sorry, S O I L Soil V I S I O N soil region, all right. And uh, this was established by Professor D. G. Fredland and his son Murray Fredland in US, in, in Canada. Soil vision. Vision, V I S I O N, S O I L, soil, V I S I O N, vision. So, this is a system which contains several modules and the question which you are asking about the mining, if you get time, students versions are available online, I mean you can have trials, you can have tutorials, you can read a lot about it and this is going to be a game changer for you guys. 
the you know uh, the commercial versions are quite expensive. But as far as your stage is concerned at this moment, you can start with the tutorials which are available on the soil vision and you can read about what is happening. Just to add quickly what these IT and AI does, I mean gone are the days when I would like to do hundreds and thousands of the samples, their tests in the laboratory, we do not have time. Look at the infrastructure, you know the way it is growing. So, how many labs in the country or in the world can really uh, you know uh, facilitate this type of testing, not many. So, what is happening in today's world is uh, people are working on speculative modeling and that is what soil vision does. So, if I know few properties of the soils, let us say texture, particle size and some fundamental basic properties like specific gravity, I can speculate all other properties, shear strength, compressibility, heat migration, condiment transport, everything. So, this is what is known as speculative modeling in geotechnical engineering where a lot of IT and AI is being involved. There are people who are working in uh, neural networks, ANN, I am sure you must have heard about artificial neural network. So, there are a lot of people who are trying to train the soil properties by using ANN networks, the way your mind works, neurons in the mind. Similarly, they are training mathematical models by which if you give some information, you can retrieve the information. So, some of you must have studied about SQL, that is sequential query language is it not. So, sequential query language is the one which is quite useful for geotechnical engineers and this is where our profession interfaces with uh, computer science guys. So, the guys who are testing soils they have a big data set of say about 7, 8 thousand soils and if I ask a question my soil with these 3 attributes how it would exhibit the engineering properties all right roughly. So, this is what the speculative modeling is, query based language and in a sequence you can ask the question to retrieve the answer. Is this fine? SQL, so those of you who are interested should read about SQL and this was going to be a good profession. So, expert systems are becoming very useful, uh, structural people they used to use expert systems quite a lot for designing their bridges all right. So, but now geotechnical engineers are not uh, much behind, uh, they are also using quite a lot. This is something very uh, recent bio geo interface uh, which deals with the molecular mechanics and uh, I do not know how many of you would be having the taste of all these things, uh, but many times this is forced and many times it becomes a part of your personality to pick up something new and work on it. So, in our group uh, we are uh, doing a lot of bio geo interface. Uh, we have done fundamental studies of how soils react to a microbial uh, attack and the whole PhD is uh, done to quantify this process to understand uh, what type of alterations system undergo when the bacterial activity or microbial activities uh, attack the geomaterials all right. This process happens in nature. And it is so sad that very conveniently uh, geotechnical engineering people have forgotten about this. So, normally what we do is we bring the samples from the field, we put them in the oven and we create a different type of soil which never exists in the field. And this is one of the reasons which we were discussing that why the systems are failing because we are not doing the real life modeling of the material, we are not talking about the real properties of the material, these are the altered state of the material. So, most of the tests which you do in conventional geomechanics, you have very conveniently saturated the material clear to get rid of the third phase which is air and that is the one which gives the most notorious characteristics to the system which has to be dealt with. So, bio geo interface is the one which is quite recent, uh, if you get time you can go through it and you will find that uh, this is something which is. Uh, going to be a game changer. That means, all your conventional theories are going to get changed once you talk about the presence of microbes in uh, the geomaterial. And this is where molecular mechanics becomes very, very important to be studied by geotechnologists. Uh, fire protection engineering, where do you think that this can be applied in uh, geotechnical engineering? Any idea? Do you remember what is 2611? This is one good example of you know how fire protection engineering can be included in uh, geotechnical engineering. There are ample examples, another example would be let us say you are designing the foundations for foundries 
you know what are foundries? Metal processing units, you are designing hammers or you say, uh, you know, what do we call them as punching units where something falls on a system. Another good example would be let us say missile launching pads, rocket launching pads, so a lot of temperature gets generated and if the soils are not worthy of sustaining this high temperature, uh, your simple shear strength theories are not going to help you in designing the foundations. So, these are the issues. Another interesting thing would be those of you who are very, very eager to know what are the other scopes of uh, fire uh, in geotechnical engineering. Forest fire, which is a recent topic, is it not? Every country is facing this problem. So, what happens when the uh, fire spreads in the, uh, let us say, uh, forest? What is going to happen? The vegetation gets burnt. And because of that, the properties of soils also get changed. So, again you have created something which is not naturally existing. Now, this fire could be man-made or this could be natural, clear. But the whole idea is, what is the end effect of this? The end effect of the forest fire is, it changes the fundamental properties of the deposits. And when the rains come, the chances are the erosions are going to be maximum from these type of deposits, clear. So, loss of vegetation, loss of organic matter from the soil because of the fire is becoming a very important topic to study these days. So, infrastructure engineering, creation of land, I think I discussed this in the class. So, when you do reclamation, uh, dredging and reclamation is something which is now uh, catching attention of people, the rheology of soils. And why rheology of the soils? Because uh, when you do dredging and land reclamation, uh, you dig out the soil from the sea or the uh, or the water bodies, and then you spray it to recast it, all right, to resettle them. There are several examples uh, in today's contemporary geopolitical situation. What is geopolitical situation? Uh, understand what is happening in the South China Sea, what India is doing in the southern part of the nation in the, in the, in the islands, all right. So, most of the countries are very active and this has become an interesting subject where uh, land creation has become a very big issue. Very recently, I do not know whether you are aware or not, India opened up a new container terminal uh, which is almost in the middle of the sea, this is in Bombay fourth container terminal. So, check it out on net, you just see the Google map and check it every year if you see the Google pictures, you can realize what is the new addition and that is the best way to learn how much active the geological boundaries these days are. I will talk about these issues and the prevention and uh, sorry preservation and restoration of uh, uh, monuments and old structures and rehabilitation also. So, wherever the minerals are involved, wherever the structures made up of soil, in the soil, with the soil are involved, you remember, uh, geotechnical engineers have to be there. So, most of the issues which archaeological society of any country faces would be restoration and preservation of the monuments, is it not? So, how would you preserve the foundations of old buildings? How do you let them remain the way they are? They should not deteriorate over a period of time. We do not want to lose the history and heritage of the country, is this correct? So, the big branch of you know professionals uh, who are into uh, these type of subjects and fortunately I also got enough opportunities to work for some of the ancient caves in the country where uh, uh, it was a R and D come research project for us. This is something very interesting, I, mean, I was talking about the Arctic and the cold region uh, geomechanics. And uh, people have already started working on lunar and Martian geomechanics. Are you aware of this? Check it on net, there are so many papers. In fact, in our lab also we have uh, published a paper on, I do not know whether you have seen this or not, uh, this is, uh, there is a big crater in uh, Boldhana district of Bombay, if in, of uh, Maharashtra sorry. And uh, this is where, you know, the meteorite fell long back millions of years back and then uh, we were trying to study how the soils got created, what are the peculiar properties. 
So, the time has come when people are talking about extraterrestrial geomechanics. This is another interesting branch of uh, geotechnical engineering where a lot of work is being done, forensic engineering, where you know the legal issues associated with the problems I have been talking about are being dealt with, failures, post failures, dams are failing, floods are you know everywhere, the type of property damage and uh, roads are getting washed out. So, who is going to pay for this? These projects are insured. Insurance companies, they do not want to shell out the money so easily. So, what do they do? They appoint people like us. So, evaluate the entire project and give us a correct picture. They call it as a root cause analysis. What is the root cause of the problem? Clear? Was the structure not designed for the floods, excessive rains, landslides and so on. So, this is also a very interesting uh, area in which I think uh, some of you should take a lead. Not many guys are present in the country at least I would say who are experts in the forensic engineering and what basically deals with is the uh, engineering aspects of legal problems associated with the project mostly. I hope you are aware of DPRs, detailed project reports. So, if you check it on net, uh, what is the problem with DPR and you will get lot of answers. So, you guys are blessed, everything is available on the net. So, you just check out what is DPR, what are the implications, how the projects are suffering, you will get plethora of information, all right. And last but not the least is energy. Some of you are quite fascinated with gas hydrates. So, I am going to discuss a lot about energy geotechnics, you know what energy, why energy is becoming a recent trend in geotechnical engineering, what it has to do with the uh, geotechnical engineering practices. So, how does this list look like? How many of you are aware of how much about these subjects? Yes. Forensic engineering. Hmm, forensic, good. Why? Um, if we know uh, how the problems are caused, uh, we can like uh, in the future, we can see that if you do like this, this is going to happen. So. Very nice. I am so happy. And then you should become an expert. So, you should read the laws of the land first and then try to assimilate this with the practice of geotechnical engineering and try to find out the loopholes. Suppose if I construct a structure today and tomorrow it settles, who should be blamed? There are so many cases, I am sure you must be coming across. Times of India, National Network reports lot of issues like this. Roads have been done and tomorrow road caves in. Who is responsible? Good. Mitra. Uh, maybe artificial intelligence and experts. Why? The data that I give it, we can actually speculate the models and. Yeah, a lot of work is being done in this area, as I said. Predictive modeling. We will be using these concepts quite a lot in uh, practice of modern day uh, geotechnical engineering. Mm -hmm.